I grew up in Anaheim, California, the first 15 years of my life, and I attended Trident Junior High School in Anaheim between 1968 and 1970, the 7th and 8th grade. Now, I was pretty thin back then, so I could run pretty fast, and I set the school 8th grade record with a time of 6.3 seconds. Of course, I couldn't dash to that door in 6.3 seconds now, but anyway. So I had the school record for the eighth grade, and I decided to go out for the track te team and be a track star. I remember the day of this particular track meet against Fremont Junior High School, and I was scheduled to run the 220-yard dash. And I was so anxious to get into that race and place in that race, first, second, or third, and be a track star that I overlooked just one eatsy weetsy detail. I forgot to take off my sweat tops. And there was a Santa Ana wind blowing against us. Now, for those of you who've never been to Southern California, Santa Ana wind is a hard and hot, dry wind that blows off the Mojave Desert sometimes gets up to gusts of about 50 to 60 miles an hour. Well, as I stepped into those starting blocks and the gun went off and I pushed off those starting blocks into the Santa Ana wind with my sweat tops on, it had a parachute effect. <laughs> and so there I was running down the track in a flipping parachute with air-resistant currents going up my front, my back, and both my armpits. And they slowed me down so much I couldn't keep up with my competitors. But I kept trying and pining away as my eyes beheld a cloud of dust in front of me, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. In fact, visualize, if you will, from a distance, a cloud of dust moving along a dirt path with two sticks and a balloon lagging way in the back, and you got a pretty good visual image of that race. <laughs> well, I finally floated to the end of the race and dead last. And I have to tell you, my fellow competitors were tired. Tired of waiting for me to cross the finish line. <laughs> but here's the thing. When I finished the race, I was in a different lane from the one I started out in, so even if I had placed in that race, I would have been disqualified. This was not the proudest moment in my life. But it taught a very good life lesson, which I was able to piece together later in life, and it's had a very strong impact on my life. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I was born on October 11th, 1954, in a pink house used as a medical clinic in Fullerton, California. My mother, who was given birth to me, was very petite in stature, and I was about to weigh in at about 10 and 11 to 11 pounds. So I got stuck in childbirth and wasn't going anywhere, and the doctor had to make a split decision as to whether or not to take me by C-section. But of course, he made the wrong decision. And he grabbed a pair of forceps and squeezed me and pulled me out by force. So I was born with damage to the central nervous system, developmentally disabled. I was also born with Tourette syndrome and ADHD, but that wasn't lead, revealed till later in life as it wasn't too commonly known back in 1954. But my mother always felt bad about what happened to me at my childbirth, and she vowed to mainstream me in normal social and educational settings and put me in regular classes. And later on in life, that sparked a lot of resentment from my fellow baby boomer classmates who felt I didn't belong with them. I was different. They were down on it. And by the time I reached my junior high years and my early senior high years, I became the victim of verbal harassment and much bullying. 
And all of that began to take its toll on me. And by the time I had reached the 10th grade, all of that had weighed me down so much, and I let all that defeat me in life so much, my grades began to plummet. I lost all my self-worth and self-respect and self-confidence. My, and I slipped into total mental and emotional anguish. Those were the sweat tops I was wearing throughout my adolescence that was weighing me down and keeping me from being all I could be. And I had to make a decision whether or not I would continue to let all this defeat me in life or I would throw off those sweat tops and go above and beyond the disabilities, the tormentors, the naysayers, and the bullies, and live the productive life I was meant to live. Well, I finally made the latter of those two decisions. And in the fall of 1972, my life began to change for the better. The fall of 72 brought me to Thomas S. Wooten High School in Rockville, Maryland. And there I threw off those sweat tops. I decided to quit feeling sorry for myself, and I got involved in the life of that school by serving as a varsity team manager for varsity wrestling, the track team, and varsity football in the middle of my senior year. Now the coaches grew to like me and respect me a great deal for the work that I did as a team manager, and all the athletes, some of them the most popular kids in school, looked up to those coaches, and when they saw how much those coaches liked me, they too grew to like me and respect me a great deal. And it wasn't long before cheerleaders, pom-pom girls, and the rest of the student body followed suit. So by the middle of football season, in the beginning of my senior year, I had acquired total high school popularity. Now, at the end of football season, I became the first team manager in the history of Thomas S. Wooten High School to become a varsity three letterman, as the school was only four years old back then. And that, too, went over big with the school. And all in all, my social life was never the same again. In fact, much different than it was two years earlier, before I threw up off those sweat tops and stopped moping around. But I graduated from Thomas S. Wooten in June of 1974, and I was voted the most improved student in the class of 74, which was announced with a valedictorian and the top 10 in the class. Now there were naysayers among the faculty who told me I was not college material and that I would not last very long if I went to college and I shouldn't go. But again, I chose to ignore the naysayers. On August 31st, 1979, I graduated from California State University, East Bay, in the San Francisco Bay Area, with a Bachelor of Science in Recreation. And from that time on, I chose to ignore all the naysayers in my life and go above and beyond my disabilities and the naysayers by accomplishing great things. Things which society often does not expect from one who is developmentally disabled. And mostly they were in singing and public speaking. Now in early 1981 I moved back to the Anaheim Orange County area where I spent the next 29 years until I moved here to Colorado in 2010. And throughout the 1980s I began to take professional voice training from a professional opera singer to learn to become a soloist and I did. And then at the start of the next decade in the fall of 1990, I joined Toastmasters International to improve my conversation skills and my communication skills, but I also joined it to learn to be a good public speaker. 
and I obtained the Distinguished Toastmaster Award, which is Toastmaster's highest level of achievement, in February of 1996. Today I've been a member of Toastmasters going on 25 years now. And during that time I've placed in over 25 major speech contests and showcases with four division championships and one district championship in Tall Tales in the spring of 1994. But I think the biggest honor I've gotten from participating in Toastmasters speech contests which coincides with the lessons that I took, is singing the national anthem at the various Toastmaster contests. I started that in the spring of 1991 and continued doing it since to this day. And in the summer of 2005, I decided to branch out a little bit. So I began to do the national anthem for professional minor league sports. And the first time was with the minor league baseball team, the Long Beach Armada. And I did that every few times every year until 2011. And the summer of 2011, the last two times I sang the national anthem in a professional sporting event was for the Colorado Springs Sky Sox over at Security Service Field in front of thousands. On December 18th, 2014, my employer, which is Service Source Inc., an organization that hires people who are developmentally disabled to work as contract workers out at the Army Post at Fort Carson, presented me with an award. It was called the Going Above and Beyond Award. And that pretty much sums up the last 40 years of my life. Today, the passion for singing and the passion for public speaking still burns inside of me, even though I'm 60 years old today. But I didn't do this, and I don't do this, to change who I am, to become an entrepreneur. I don't do it to show up the naysayers or put entrepreneurs with type A personality in their place. <laughs> no, I do it, again, to rise above my disabilities and the naysayers and to be an inspiration to many. And so the moral of today's story is, as you run that race of life towards your goals, your objectives, and your destiny, whatever slows you down or hinders you in any way, they can be disabilities, naysayers, the fear of failure, or past failure then throw off those sweat tops and run a fast, steady race toward reaching your goals, your objectives, and your destiny. Go above and beyond and cross that finish line. Thank you for having me today.